of students and faculty, we are here today to discuss outsourcing. Is it good? Is it bad? And what the difference it is between offshoring. All right, I would like to introduce my panelists. These are all St. Edward's students who have done extensive research over the topic of outsourcing. So we're going to go down the list. We have Andrew Spear. We have Lyle Beloved. We have Kristen E. Stevens and Matil Nabu. And we're going to all discuss oh, um, Andrew's for, and then Lyle is against, for, and against. Alright, let's get started. They each have a four minutes to answer their one question. We'll have a four minute Q&A at the end. And let's get to start. Alright. So, Andrew, what are some negative effects from outsourcing to the economy? Hi, uh, I'm Andrew Spear and I'm against the idea of outsourcing our jobs um, <coughs> across to other foreign countries. Um, uh, there's many different aspects to this. Uh, the one is a high unemployment rate. So when we send our jobs across to foreign nations, it, I mean, it leaves uh, our people around the poverty line uh, without jobs because these c companies are hiring uh, skilled foreign workers that are willing to work for lower salaries than what uh, our people are willing to work for, which in result um, leaves these people without jobs, which this also leads into a loss of income. Um, outsourcing has also led to a decrease in payroll tax receipts, as well as payments to Social Security and Medicare, uh, as well as sales revenue. So this is obviously a big deal. And furthermore, it's also resulted in a U.S. trade deficit. So uh, in the past couple of years, we have gone from having a trade surplus to now having a trade deficit of up to $56 <coughs> billion. And uh, this is a result of the United States not manufacturing the technology we need, which results in us buying it from other uh, foreign nations. And then, according to Peter Cohen, who is a businessman, author, and uh, venture capitalist and financer, he noticed that the loss of a competitive advantage has actually been ongoing since the 1970s to 1980s, when the uh, textile industry began outsourcing jobs to different countries. Uh, so essentially the U.S. lost its advantage of manufacturing during the 1970s and really hasn't recovered since. And then uh, there's also been a fragmentation of the supply chain with this uh, outsourcing. It basically lets uh, new companies come into the industry and compete, which undermines the pricing power and profitability. Uh, also it is, it's really only feasible if it's separated from the other supply chain activities such as product development, branding, marketing, distribution, and uh, after-sales services. And then lastly, there's a lot of hidden costs associated with uh, outsourcing. Companies don't really take into effect the quality of the work that they are undertaking, I guess. They more focus on like the quantitative numbers, so like salaries and stuff like that. And productivity is reduced with like time zone differences. There was an instance with Dell where they were required to basically stop their outsourcing due to customer complaints about like accents, like with the IT work, they couldn't understand accents over the phone. And uh, the kind of the time zone difference uh, resulted in them having to move their uh, center of operations to uh, Texas, Idaho, and Tennessee which is a very interesting example there. So I am against the idea of outsourcing our jobs to uh, foreign nations. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'd like to go down to Ilya. All right, what are some of the positive aspects that come through outsourcing in the economy? <coughs> Hello, my name is Ilya Bell, and I'm for outsourcing. See, people think outsourcing has an effect on losing jobs in America. But studies have shown that outsourcing does not increase job loss in America. And it may actually add jobs. A company chooses to manufacture goods outside of the U.S. for one specific reason. And that's due to cheaper costs. It's all, it's all in all, it's way too expensive to manufacture goods in America, especially you know clothing, shoes, textiles, anything of that nature. And Americans don't want to do that work for low pay. And it's just not profitable. How can an American want to pay less for an item but yet not to want to, you know, be against outsourcing. 
Outsourcing allows bigger profits, which in case when you, uh, when you outsource and you're in the business field, it increases competition, it makes prices go lower, it makes more consumers happy. Consider this for example. A customer can buy a new smartphone for $600. If the phone was made in the USA, it would cost more than $1,800. Any of you in the audience, would you want to pay $800 for a smartphone, $1,800 for a smartphone instead of $600? That's due to outsourcing. Without outsourcing, all goods would be more expensive. Everything would be more expensive. Things would be less affordable. The minimum wage would have to be increased. It's just the economy in, its, in itself would have to increased and people would not be able to afford as much. It would make the economy slower. The savings that the customer gets from all of this can be used on other goods and services. That's why it's also been shown that outsourcing increases the national GDP, it increases the economy, because goods are made in other countries but they're imported here. Outsourcing makes sense. Profits increase as resources are allocated more efficiently. Just because we outsource doesn't mean we make our raw materials here. We send raw materials to China, to Taiwan, to India, and they are shipped, they are made there for cheaper labor, and they are sent here. And that is even cheaper to do all that, to send materials across the world, to bring them there, and then bring them back. It's cheaper, it's more efficient, it's not touching jobs. People always assume that outsourcing you know, decreases jobs in America. For the past 15 years, corporations have moved higher level jobs that Americans actually want faster than jobs have left. It's specific, it's an 82% increase in insource jobs compared to a 23% increase in outsourced jobs. So all the jobs that Americans don't want have left. And there's been an 83% increase in jobs that Americans do want. That's more than double over a period of 15 years. So, in 1991, <coughs> jobs, out, jobs unsourced from the U.S. increased from 4.9 million to 6.4 million in 2001. And some other positives of outsourcing. There's an increase in product availability. You know, Everything's made in China. There's anything you can think of is sent here, and you know Americans can consume whatever they want to consume. There's competitive gains for small business. There's stronger U.S. job demand for actual jobs that are needed in the U.S. and people that actually want to do them. And there's rising standards of living. For every one dollar outsourced, the economic gain to the U.S. is a dollar and twelve cents to a dollar and fourteen cents, and that is why I'm for outsourcing. Uh, Chris and me, um, in what ways is outsourcing beneficial to a company and how does it differ from offshoring? Hello, my name is Chris and Stevens and I am for outsourcing. Um, I am for it because it is beneficial to a company to outsource, to bring in skilled labor and so that employees at that company can focus on their task at hand. Um, outsourcing gets a really bad rap because it is used synonymously with offshoring when actually there are two different things. Um, Bloomberg Business Review describes outsourcing as um, <coughs> allowing a third party to take part in business processes. So you hire a third party to um, do a task like accounting, data entry, research, programming. Manufacturing is included in that, um, but it is different from offshoring. Offshoring is moving your part, part of your business, your business, proce your business processes, to another country, and it is so you can get around the regulations of the U.S., and so you can get around expensive labor. And so it isn't benefiting the, it isn't beneficial for all parties involved. Whereas outsourcing, you are helping an industry grow, you're building a global network, and you are also getting technologies from all over the world. Um, whereas outsourcing, I mean, whereas offshoring is exploitative of the employees, you're doing it so you can cut corners and costs. Um, <coughs> also, um, outsourcing, you are able to get a like, global perspective because you are hiring skilled professionals like in different fields. So you can hire 
um, and you can outsource your research to to Europe and you can get uh, the best in the field and you don't have to pay for them to come here to hire them into your company and then you don't have to go through training processes and also like accounting um, it makes much more sense to hire an, uh, a certified public accountant versus uh, to hire them through a firm rather than bringing them into your company where you have to hire them you have to make a new sector of your company for tax preparation and accounting and accounting when you can just hire them through a third party and it makes more sense economically for your company and it um, makes your company like it really diversifies your company because you're having the best in the field and that I that's why I am for outsourcing uh, because it uh, brings in skilled third, skilled third parties so your employees of your company can focus on its processes. Alright, thank you Kristen. And Mathilde, what are some social aspects surrounding the whole issue of outsourcing? Hello, my name is Mathilde and I am against outsourcing and my first main point is because of the human rights the website Top University have been showing that an Asian worker works an average of 16 plus hours a week, whereas an American worker is going to work an average of 40 hours a week. In It's almost twice what we work here in Europe or in the US. And I think that we are taking advantage of it. And I don't think it's right when we're claiming being a democratic country where this is going against the human rights. Um, then, for example, the child labor as well is another problem. Uh, in Asia, the age for a um, child to work is between 5 to 14, is considered as a good age to start working, versus in the US, you're going to work when you're 16 or 18. Once again, when, for me, having a child working when they're 5 is not something normal. Here, we can I went off to tell the five they go to school, they go to kindergarten, and they don't have to worry about bringing money home to be able to survive and to provide food to their family. We are trying to do that for them. Um, according to the World Research Country, also, um, China exports 20.2% of the US overall import. Um, firstly, they import electronic equipment. Then it's going to be machine, engine and pumps, and furniture and lightning that we're going to use in our houses. And once again, all of this created a lot of pollution that as we're doing it somewhere else, not our country and our place is not polluted by all of this. And it's been showing that uh, by Newsweek that between 17 to 36 percent of the various pollution in China in 2006 were related to the production <coughs> of goods that were exported and the fifth of, the, of this is especially linked to the US and China trade. So right now in China there are some places where you cannot walk in the street even without wearing a mask and if you look at pictures it's just smoky and it looks like it's just some, a, burning, a, a building just burning the street. So I this is why I'm against outsourcing, because I think that we're claiming being a democratic country, but we're going against all what we're claiming just by doing it in another country, and we think it's all right. All right, thank you, Mathilde. All right, uh, I want to thank all my panelists for showing up today. I would like to thank all of y'all, the students, <coughs> faculty, and experts. Now, if y'all may, I have four minutes of Q&A, so we're going to start it right now. outsourcing a safer bet uh, for our economy. Uh, right, I'm going to direct that to Andrew. So do you think outsourcing is a safer bet in the economy? Yeah, so I know uh, Chris and he had a little bit about to say, uh, a little bit to say about this with, I uh, understand that companies, uh, you know, it's a way for them to cut costs and, uh, you know, cut corners, I guess. But even if salary costs go down, it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole cost of operation will decrease. Uh, it's kind of similar to with the whole Dell uh, idea with they didn't really care about the quality of the services that they were providing and it resulted from them, I mean, basically having to move their 
center of operation from India all the way back to the United States. So uh, I don't really feel that offshore is the right way to go. And, um, I mean, as an American, I want us to be the most successful country that we can be. And with these uh, workers being denied jobs from other foreigners, I just don't feel like it's very fair. So therefore, I don't feel like it's a safer bet for our economy. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Anybody else? <coughs> so is it fair to say, just based on what I heard, that there's some of you up there who are for outsourcing, but not for offshore operations, <coughs> right? Yes, ma'am. I would like to direct that to uh, Kristen. Yes, so I am for outsourcing because it is a way to basically diversify your, comp your company and have like really skilled workers and professionals work for your company. And it really, whereas I'm against offshoring because it does it does really terrible things. And when you're when you're outsourcing, you the third party that you hire, you're able to be picky in who you choose to hire, and like you can choose a company who follows regulations that you stand for, and you might outsource to a different country. Not necessarily manufacturing. I think everyone up here is talking about manufacturing, but it all is call centers, and it is web designs and programming and you're not sending that to necessarily an underdeveloped country. You're sending those those jobs to European countries as well and to like Asiatic countries that are developed like Japan. So I think that yeah, I think there is a way to be for outsourcing and against offshoring, definitely. Right, thank you for question for outsourcing over offshoring. Anybody else has a question? 